best known for playing Anya on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, and if you know, uh, if you follow her career and, and read her blogs, you'll know that she is just as outspoken as her character was. Uh, and she's not afraid to speak her mind about the real world that we live in. So I think it'll be very interesting today. Uh, we're also going to talk about uh, her role in the box office blockbuster horror film Darkness Falls and uh, her web comic, which just uh, debuted recently, called Contra Pussy, uh, which I heard her describe to someone as a sex in the city with animals. So uh, <laughs> we know you'll have lots of questions about that. Oh, uh, lovely and talented she is, and she is right here, Emma Caulfield. radio to your own personal writing, it's clear that, you know, you're not shy to speak your mind. Where do you think you got that from Shame. in your life? I should be shy to speak my mind. I'm getting some trouble sometimes. Um, where do I get that from? I have no idea where I get that from, well, actually. I think I just don't, I don't know any other way to be. So you've always been that way when you were younger, you think? Uh, mm, I think when I was really young, yes, and then... And then I sort of, like through high school, middle school, high school, was kind of a, I don't know, a little outcast, probably. Very kind of off my own world and kind of a loner. And I, I didn't really particularly like the people I went to school with. Um, and they were the same group of people from seventh all the way to senior year. And so you're kind of stuck. And, you know, if you liked them, if you if you if you liked the people you were with, you were <clears throat> stoked. If you didn't, <clears throat> you know, you were kind of. Well, you ended up like me, which is kind of retreating. So I think I kind of got quiet for a while. And once I graduated, I think found my true voice again. <laughs> yeah, it was like a whole new world after high school. Yeah, you say that to people. Say that to people all the time. Just get through high school. Just get through high school. Oh my God, <laughs> there's no amount of money. <laughs> no amount of money. Well, you did go back to high school in some respects. I did. I did, yeah. Now, you had been familiar with the kind of soap opera television in the world and with recurring characters and how people have relationships with them. Mm -hmm. Did you know what you were getting into with Buffy, with the fandom, when you started? No, not at all. No <laughs> clue. Not at all. I mean, I do love sci-fi. Um, but I, yeah, no. No, I have no idea. <laughs> You say you love sci-fi. Is it true that you turned down an opportunity to audition for Battlestar Galactica? Yes, on the ass. <laughs> <laughs> I did. They asked me about four times to come in. The producers asked me to read for Caprica Six. Oh my God! Oh my God. And I, 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 I was an ass. I, mean, I, I can't. It, pain, it pains me because I think it's the best show I think ever. I'm gonna just. Say that right now. I think it's amazing, and I'm um, sad it's over. Um, but I was just finishing Buffy, and I thought, first of all, I thought this, this just sounded dumb. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna do that, even though I loved the campiness of the original um, as a kid, and I thought that it was going to be something like that. I just had no idea, and having just come off or coming off of a sci-fi fantasy show, I thought, well, if I do another one, then that's, I'm never going to be able to do anything else because I, I didn't want to be pigeonholed into one kind of genre, even though it's my favorite genre. I was like, ah, no, and I'll never be able to work in anything else. Ah, blah, blah, blah. And it was just so stupid. It's a stupid <laughs> decision, I think. It's my one creative regret, definitely. 
Is this part of the process, though, of, of being an actor and, and looking for roles and accepting roles? Is you have a lot of variables to weigh, and what is yes. it that is the? How do you know when the role is right for you when you read the script? Oh, um, I think I just end up feeling I, I get excited about it, you know, and I don't I don't get excited about things I read very often. So when I do, usually that's when my little radar goes off. And then, you know, if I don't get it, I'm really sad. And that's part of, you know, this business. It's extremely difficult, to, difficult and there's so much um, disappointment involved that after you spend a little time in it, you start, I don't know if jaded is quite the word, but you just, you just kind of stay even like this instead of allowing yourself to get very excited or not excited about anything until it's actually real. And then you can be excited. Um, did I answer your question? <laughs> I did, okay. <laughs> As many people know, the role of Anya was originally not a, a regular character. Yes. He came on to do the one episode. So how was it pitched to you when you went in for that audition? Uh, what did you think the character was? I didn't really know anything about her. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't have, I didn't have a script. Um, I just had some sides. And I, I think it was an audition scene with, um, it was a scene with, with Willow, and I was upset about something. I don't even remember. It was a while ago, but I <laughs> thought it was funny, and so that was, you know, I hadn't really gotten a chance to do anything funny, and I hadn't really done much. I had, I think 90210 in 96 was my first, like, real job. It was, like, just new to everything. And then I got so sick of it because I, I didn't, I thought that the business would be something other than what it was. And I was just very disillusioned. I'm like, ah, I don't want to do this. I don't, ah, I'm done. I don't know. I'm going to go back to school or something. I don't know. And then, you know, it's like, wow, I kind of miss that money. I'm like, that was, that was some good money. Shame. Well, maybe, maybe not every, I don't know, maybe I can find something interesting. And then as fate would have it, I got a call from my old manager, because I literally left. Like, I just stopped. I, I left the business after 90210. And, well, there's this audition for Buffy, for a guest star. You know, do you like the show? And I actually did. I loved the show. I thought it was great. I'm like, yes, awesome, great. And then five years later, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we know how it ended for you rather swiftly. Yeah. How did you feel when you read your death scene? Well, I asked him to kill me, so I wasn't surprised. Aww. I knew I was dying. Um, I didn't think it would happen so, uh, yeah, without any kind of fanfare. It was just like, and now I'm dead. Awesome. And no one, no one really talked about it. No one was really sad about it. It was just like, I might as well, I don't know. It was a very strange thing. Uh, for about five seconds. That's what I got. Five years and I got five seconds. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I still think it was the right decision to kill her off. I, 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 thought, it, I thought it was good to kill her off. I thought it made an interesting bookend to her journey, to have her die being heroic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know it's sad, it's <laughs> I read that you preferred to be mortal on the show rather than a demon, maybe because of the makeup, the makeup. Or, or was it because you wanted to be heroic instead of being um, bad? I just, anything to avoid the makeup is where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> I get very claustrophobic and, and have full, I mean, just full and hands in the chest. And, uh, <laughs> so uncomfortable. Um, I, I did like, I did like toward the end, being a demon again, but not in the makeup. That was a fun thing to play. She was very, she was very torn. You know, Anya was torn a lot, and that was fun to play. Did it help you in your real life in that girlfriends come to you for uh, help? in certain situations. Oh, I need to draw on them. I just draw on my own past. <laughs> with, with some unfortunate mistakes, as I like to call them. Um, and so, yeah, sort of imagining being able, you know, like going back into that period of time in my head, like, oh, if I'd only had this ability back then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those of us who are into horror uh, a little bit uh, also know you from Darkness Falls. Oh, shame. I'm sorry you all had to sit through that. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the movie was awful. It was awful. <laughs> 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 
It's just the worst. God. And if we didn't shoot an awful movie, I can assure you, we actually shot a really good movie, and it was just absolutely destroyed. <laughs> Did it turn you off making horror? Uh, or PG horror? Anything? No, no. I, I'm well. I'm not a big horror fan. I, I like the kind of horror I like is like The Shining, yeah. you know, um, or or Silence of the Lambs. If you could put that in that category, which I think they do sometimes, they put that in a horror category, or The Exorcist. They're Stuff that's horror. not, yeah, that kind of horror rad, but the kind of like saw or, mm -hmm. yes. you know, the, the gory just kill you for no reason. I don't know. I'm not really a but, fan. But you're interested in the way uh, people think, so it doesn't surprise yeah. me that you like something like The Shining. Um, oh, the Shining's great. <laughs> uh, did you study psychology? Is that true? I did. Yeah. I was a psych major, yes. Never got my degree, sadly, which yeah. is just bums me out to no end, but whatever. But you've had this interesting life path, and I wanted to ask you if, if you find yourself at odds in Hollywood, because from, from here in Canada, it seems that you're a bit of a rare breed in that, you know, you have conservative views, and but you're also, you know, you're pro-animal, and you're pro-choice, and you know, it's not black and white with you. You're, no. you're complicated well, People can't person. pin me down. They try. <laughs> they really do. It's very strange when I get into you know, conversations about politics or anything, and they're like, well, surely you must think best. I'm like, no, actually, I don't. I think the exact opposite. They're like, yeah, but you think that. I'm like, so? <laughs> I think, actually, when, you, when, you, when it comes right down to it, I think I am a true moderate. I think that's what it is, which is, which is hot, rare. I haven't really met a true moderate, another one. I don't know. Because I'm so this way on some things and so that way on the other. And it just ends up I think, coming right down to the middle. I don't think a really hardline conservative person would make contrapussy. No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, they wouldn't. <laughs> For those of you who haven't seen it yet, can you give them sort of the, the elevator pitch? What, what is contrapussy? Contrapussy is about a cat <laughs> named Contrapussy, um, a controversial cat, thus the name. Um, her other name is Sonnet. That's her sort of day time name. What her owner knows her as, but her true self, when she sneaks out at night, she is this cat um, named Contrapussy, with the cigarette and the, the, you know, high heels and tight clothes, and very, but very elegant, very sort of Lauren Bacall. But that's what she'd sound like if she could talk. Um, and it's essentially, I mean, I heard you say it, it is sort of a sex in the city with animals. It's a little bit more subversive. Um, we essentially are just trying to explore human behavior through a different kind of animal. Um, and there really is no subject that will be off limits at all. And the more we make people uncomfortable, the happier I am. <laughs> we've sort of just been kind of tame for the first, I think we've had, I think we have seven up. I think we have seven strips up now. Um, bit by bit, it's just gonna get more and more um, <laughs> controversial. That's, that's the name of the, the title, Contropathy. Yeah. And this cat runs around with not just cats. No, and it's, it's cats, dogs, um, they make wagers on, I think the last strip that was up, they, because I know, I, I think this sometimes, like, you know, why it seems that animals, when they cross the road, there's always this certain period of time where there are no cars whatsoever, and they don't bother crossing, but as soon as there's a car, they beeline, um, and, you know, they make wagers on whether or not, you know, the skunk's going to make it alive. Um, there's, there's, you know, talk of the caste system between animals, um, immigration, uh, inter intermixing breeds, um, <laughs> there's racial tension, um, free love consequences, you know, it's out there. I think there was a horse in one of them. I think at a, at a support group for catnip, for which is crack for cats. Um, there was all I think there were all kinds of animals. And at some point, I just said this the other day. I'm going to have to throw in a bunny because <laughs> it keeps coming up in my life, and it's just, I think the bunny's going to have to make an appearance some some way. <laughs> I don't know if it'll live, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why a web uh, serial uh, comic to do uh, this idea? 
Um, well, we're doing it in stages. This will be the this is the first stage. Um, we'll eventually print it out, so it'll be you know like a normal hard copy comic, and then we're going to start animating it. Um, and we're we're really excited to do that. We already yeah we can't wait to do that. And I have a friend who's a brilliant voiceover artist, and she's sort of Seth MacFarlane. Like she can do anything, and you cannot tell that it's the same person. Um, and I'm sure I'll end up doing voices now and again. Um, but ultimately, this, you know, it's to have it be, you know, a show. But it's such a great grassroots way of, of building an audience to Speaking do it. Speaking of well. sets and uh, voices, you did some robot chicken. Yes, I have. <laughs> well, again, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> do you keep in touch with Seth? I do. We're very good friends. Absolutely love him. We like, put him in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and I could because he's like this big. <laughs> Him. And you said, you know, the, with the web thing, it's, it's a great way to interact with people. Mm -hmm. uh, you, do, uh, you do Twitter, yes. and you've done the great MySpace blogs for years. Um, if anyone... I haven't done that in a long time, because I got so, I'm such a victim of new technology, and I <laughs> moved into Facebook, and then Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. I'm so obsessed with Twitter, it's embarrassing. <laughs> I'm totally addicted to Twitter. You know Lauren McCall is on there, you could be Twitter. Oh, really? <laughs> Should send her a picture of the cat. <laughs> this is how I imagined you. <laughs> and then oddly enough, her on again, off again boyfriend looks a lot like George Clooney. And I don't, named Double O. That's his name. And he does. If you've seen it, you look at it. He, he looks like a cat. Like a if George Clooney was a cat. <laughs> you tweeted that uh, you have this new project called Shadow Play. And uh, I think one of your notes was that uh, you had fake blood in your mouth for the very first time. You did. I don't know how I missed that for five years. <laughs> but I didn't. I've never I've ever had fake blood in my mouth. I mean, I think they might have put it here, but like actually have a, you know, like a NyQuil capped size full of blood that has to pour out of my mouth. Never experienced that, and hopefully never will again, because it's disgusting. <laughs> well, that makes me want to know more about Shadow Play. What can you tell us? Shadow Play is much like The Shining, actually. Um, the director is very influenced by Kubrick. Um, the film is God, it's darkly funny, um, very intense, very uncomfortable. Um, and I, I, I wish I could actually say what it centers around, but if I do that, then it, I think it gives away the film. Let's put it this way, it's a very, it's a psychological, just, it'll just fuck you up. It's just, <laughs> it's really intense. And I, I play um, the wife of the main guy who it, it centers around. Who else is in the film that we might know? Oh, he would ask me that. Um, <laughs> I literally, I stepped into it. I got off a plane and within eight hours was, was on the set. It was very strange. The actress fell out and they asked me to come in and I met everybody all like that. And of course I had to do my longest, most intense scene the first day. Um, so I've, I remember half the people, which is really sad. Um, uh, God. It's what all right. That's name? what I am. Is someone from Twilight? I oh, got. <laughs> no, not Robert Pattinson. I remember Robert Pattinson. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, it'll come to me. I'll have to get back to you. You can. You can. Go IMDb shout. If it didn't it. cost four hundred dollars for Wi-Fi in this building, someone would already have it. <laughs> um, Give me a second. It's good. The director is this new director named Nick Simons, and he's he's amazing. We. I saw some of the dailies, and but it's just great. It's just beautifully shot. It's hard to call something that disturbing beautiful, but it actually is. You can, uh, I think you can be shadow play friends on Facebook or something. Right? Yes, and apparently I've gotten some Twitter saying that they can't find it. I don't know how that's possible, because I, I was looking at it when I said, here, if you're on Facebook, become a fan, and it's right there. There's thousands of people who are fans. So I don't know. I'm sort of technologically inept, so I can't quite tell you. I, I attempted to sort of cut and paste the link, and then quickly realized I cut and pasted my private Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, God, delete. Like, oh, no. um, 
Um, so I'm afraid to attempt anything like that again. So I would just say if you're on Facebook, just just search it. It should be there. I promise you it's there. You said that your first scene was really intense and challenging. What would you say is the most challenging scene that you've done in your career? Oh. Oh, she's tough. Um. Hmm. Wow, I don't even. Uh, well. Well, I guess one of the more exhausting ones probably would have been from Buffy, from the body, mm -hmm. where I cry. Nice. Um, mainly because Joss is such a taskmaster that it's very specific about tears. So, and I can cry on cue, like I just can cry. Not that hard, like for me. I know every actor's got their Achilles heel. Luckily crying is not one of them for me, but he, He's just very specific about where the tear should be and how many tears <laughs> and how with I. And so, you know, I, by the end of that, we were in meal penalty at this point, and I had to go to the bathroom, and we were shooting the scene, and I was just exhausted, and he just wouldn't, he just wouldn't say, you know, moving on. So we just kept doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. I was just so exhausted. So very likely what moved you, because I, I tend to hear that from fans all the time, that that mm -hmm. moment resonated for them a lot. So I hate to like burst your bubble, but like, <laughs> I was just so tired and had to go to the bathroom so badly. And was worried that I was costing them money because once you go into your lunch time, it costs the studio a lot of money. Like the union is very specific about breaking when you're supposed to break, and we weren't. And so I just kept seeing dollar signs because I couldn't get that <laughs> fucking tear. <laughs> but I did get it. I did finally. And then we went to lunch. So that was the that was, that was a very exhausting time. Yeah. Well, we appreciate it. Shadow <laughs> <laughs> Shadowplay has Oz Perkins, Mary Kelly, sorry, Mark Kelly, Evan. Bronwyn Cornelius. Thank you very much. Um, it's the one who's a toilet. It's not Mark Kelly. We're going to open it up to questions, and since you were helpful, if you have one, you can go first. <laughs> um, I was wondering about uh, controversy. I was yes. wondering if you base the character on any real life inspiration, like do you have a cat? Or I do. It is very much, yes, my cat, Brian Dennehy. It's my cat, <laughs> um, and he is the, he's human, I mean he is, he's like a human trapped in that adorable little body, he's uh, a purebred Abyssinian fawn, uh, no not fawn, um, blue, blue abbey, mm. so it's like a silvery, beautiful gray, he's, oh, he's just gorgeous, and he's ridiculous, and he gets into lots of trouble. And I, sometimes he'll escape at night and I, he'll come back looking just totally hungover. <laughs> just, 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 just so put off by the sunlight and by my presence and he'll just have the one paw. And, um, so maybe come back with some scrapes. I'm like, what do, you, what do you get into? What do you do when you, when you get out at night? I've seen him, sadly, one day mounting a cat across the street <laughs> and just in public. Like, how rude. You know? <laughs> I'm like, this is just, you know, there's something there. And then, you know, my writing partner and I, we write a lot, and we thought just what a great little venue this would be to explore, you know, being a woman to a cat, and then giving my cat a little, little, little life of his own. Yeah, that's it. Sorry, here. Speaking of uh, a. Uh, a possibly difficult episode uh, yeah. in your career, once more with feeling. Yeah. Um, I was wondering, I mean, that is such an incredible episode. Cert I mean, I consider it the best episode of any kind of television series ever. Oh. It was so good, and, uh, and you were so incredible in it as well, and I was wondering whether, do you, did you have musical experience before that, or done musical theater even since then, anything in the musical genre? Oh, God, other than high school musicals, no, nothing, no experience, and was very scared to 
to do that episode because I really am not a singer. I'm not, I assure you. I sound way better because of the sound booth and, <laughs> and whatever magic they do. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and no, I've never done, I haven't done it since, unless you count the shower. And then I feel bad for my neighbors. It's not good. Um, yeah, no, I was very nervous doing that. We all were, but it was so fun. We really did have a really good time. It was a blast. I think it definitely gave us a lot of new life for it to go another year. You know, you just you do something for a while, and it can just get very monotonous. Um, and it's no fault of anybody's. It's just you just it just happens. You know, sort of take things for granted, and I think we had a nice kick. It was good. But thank you. I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> yeah. Um, first of all, I wanted to recommend Tammy as a name for the bunny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that your name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, but as well, my question is. Uh, most people in life, they have like their own set of golden rules, such as do unto others, or if you're not a part of the problem, or not a part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Right. What would you say are your two main uh, values or golden rules, and how do they impact the choices you make in your career? Wow. <laughs> That's really deep for this early. Um. <laughs> Something, oh God, um, I never thought about that. I, I, I don't know how to really answer that. I think I, I maybe would look at things that irritate me <clears throat> in others and in myself to not do or wish others wouldn't do. Um, things that I don't like seeing happen, like wasted potential. I can't stand that. I hate when I see somebody who's got a lot of potential and they just don't seize it. It just, it just saddens me greatly. And if I ever feel like I'm not, if I'm doing that, if I'm being lazy about something, then I get, you know, really hard on myself. I just like I kick myself. And go, no, 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 no. Can't, you can't do that. Do not get complacent. Um, I hate liars. I hate it. I don't see the point in that at all. Although there is sometimes, there is definitely a place for the little white lie. Um, we've all done it, you know? It's like if someone just looks really awful, I'm like, how do I look? You know, what are you gonna say? You look really awful? No, there's a time and a place. You know, uh, people on the street, and I think someone lied to them. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, if it's like my, you know, one of my good friends or something, and they put together something just outrageously awful, I'm not, I'm not gonna, you know, like you look amazing. I will, be, no, no, you cannot. I refuse. You better like, change something. Change it immediately. Um, that's off topic completely. Um, we have a question here. Okay, this is kind of a two-part question. What would you say is one of your favorite experiences that you've had with a fan, and, a, and the worst experience you've had with a fan? And also, what is the weirdest or most surprising gift you've received from a fan? The question is best and worst fan encounters and strange gifts. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, strange gifts. I don't think I've gotten any strange gifts. I like traffic. No, no strange gifts. The best experience. Probably recently, actually. I had. Um, where was I? Was it right here recently? No, it wasn't here. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't here. That question's pretty good. Um, <laughs> that was really good. Um, no, it was in, sh uh, well, oh God, I don't know, it was a few Why weeks ago. I was in some city <laughs> promoting controversy, and I can't remember which city it was. It was maybe Chicago or something. Maybe it was Philadelphia, I don't know. And um, a, a fan had come up and given me a, you know, a stuffed bunny, and I, I do get that quite a lot, and it's very sweet, but honestly, 
Like, if you're ever tempted to do that, it's no. just don't. Because I, 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 I'm, I'm not six, and I have no place to put them. And I actually have saved a few of them, but then, like, I, I can't even tell you. Like, I've lost count of how many I get, and I, I end up just feeling really bad, because I don't, whatever, that's beside the point. Anyway, um, some, somebody, uh, some guy came up and, and gave me one, and I was like, thank you very much, it's very sweet, you know. And I'm like, what am I gonna do with it? Like, ah. And I didn't bring luggage, and that's always the problem too, because I always bring a carry-on. I never pack, I don't pack heavily. So when I get stuff, I don't know what I'm to do. Anyway, so I was thinking like, oh, what am I gonna do with this, with this very large bunny? And then this little girl came up, she could have been more than seven, maybe six, with her dad. And she was the cutest little girl you've ever seen. And, oh my God, she was just so cute. And you know, they came up and they were very nice and thank you, Megan, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And she just eyed that rabbit. She just <laughs> eyed it. And I, and I just like, do you, you know, do you want, you know, do you want it? I'm like, is that okay? Can I get rid of it? He's like, it's cool. <laughs> okay. So like, and she, she, latched onto that like like someone who hadn't eaten for a week would look at food like she just latched onto that and she her just face just just beamed she was just so happy and i just that was just such a great moment like i i know i made like made her really happy i don't know does that sound ridiculous i don't know that it's just something about that Something about that little girl and just being able to, I mean, I, I would feel bad if the, the poor fan who gave me the money realized I gave it away, but I think it, it, it had a much better home um, yeah. than if it was, it, it went exactly where it should um, have gone, I think. I hope that doesn't make me sound like an asshole. No. Like I just gave away a gift. I, I mean, I honestly thought it was the right thing to do, sorry. Um, and worst fan experience. Um, gotta be this, 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 this woman recently on Twitter. She was an absolute bitch and I let her know it. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And D like blocked her and told her I was blocking her because she was awful. <laughs> but don't go away because of it. No, I'm not going anywhere. I love Twitter. I absolutely love it and I love hearing from you guys. And she was, she was an exception. Everyone else is extremely nice, but she was just, Awful, just horrible. Oh, and another one was horrible, but not to me. To poor little Amber Benson, who I don't know if any of you have had yeah. the fortune of yes. like yes. the fortune of meeting her, but she's just an absolute little angel on this earth. And we were in uh, where were we last weekend? Where Orlando. was I? Was I in Florida? Okay. <laughs> and uh, I was on a panel with her and Charisma and Adam Bush yeah. and the moderator. You could call him that. The guy was on something, something bad, and he was out of his mind. And clearly, he had questions on, you know, cue cards or whatever that he got from fans. And <laughs> he just didn't think to read, not read this out loud. Like, I don't know where his brain was. Like, why would you read this out loud? And it was not even a question. It was just somebody just saying horrible things about Amber, about her, not even about the character, just just insults. And he read it, and we all look at him, I'm like, are you out of, Charisma goes, why would you read that? <laughs> like, right, in, right into the mic, right? And, and he just sort of looked dumbfounded, like he just got stuck like a deer, like in traffic. And I just lost my mind, and then I, it's probably on video somewhere, and I can't believe I did it, but I like stood up, and I'm just like, who the fuck? Which one of you? Of course, of didn't bother to stand up. Didn't bother. Didn't say yeah. I wrote it. You know. Hopefully, oh, shamed him into silence. That was a pretty bad experience, but not for me, but for her. It made me actually think, not that experience, but talking about the bunny, of two questions. One, where does the bunny suit uh, live? And in a costume house somewhere. Uh, it, was know, it was a rental. You know, it was a rental. And uh, you said you're really into sci-fi. When you come to something like this, are you tempted to shop? Like, do you buy things? I'm um, not a buyer, although I, I, I <laughs> freely admit that I was like, oh, that's fuck. Like, <laughs> I love Star Trek. It's 
just shame, shameful, shameless. I just, I, yeah, I do. I own all seven seasons of Next Generation. <laughs> <laughs> and, and should own Voyager. I love Voyager as well. I love just sci-fi. Aliens, classic, brilliant movie, uh, 2001, um, you know, yeah. But no, I'm not just tempted to buy, unless they're DVDs. Uh, many more questions. Uh, Girl in Purple. Okay. <coughs> Was there any type of hijinks on set of Buffy, or do you, who do you keep in touch with most? Um, Seth and I are really good friends. Tom Lank and I are really good friends. Um, I talk to Sarah every, I don't know, like once a year or something. <laughs> um, we just, we are pat, like, if our paths can cross, but she's a good girl. Um, and then I, you know, I do see, I do see Amber. Um, and Tony, this Tony Ed is like the sweetest man on the planet when he's in town, because he lives in London, or Bath, Bath, as he would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I remember hearing about you from like a bunch of specific episodes, like certain scenes. How was it being Anya? How she's so outspoken? Like I remember watching Hush and reading, watching the, the commentary and the one hand gesture. Oh God! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was that like? Well, I think you can see I don't have necessarily a problem with <laughs> speaking my mind, so it wasn't that much of a stretch. Um, although that was very, that's my phone, sorry, that was very difficult to do. I'm not, um, I, yeah, the, I mean, I'm pretty foul-mouthed, and, and I'm perfectly fine talking about, you know, sex with friends, like, in a private little setting, but that was, like, it's just a lot. And I was like, oh my god, do I have to? Do I have to do that? So I go, that, that will be forever cemented. <laughs> and he, of course, has such a sick sense of humor, he thought it was, of course, it's, yes, that's why. Yes, we're do it. <laughs> yes, that was hard. Yeah. Gentleman in the hat. Uh, how do you feel about that new Buffy movie that's being proposed right now? Garbage. Yeah. yeah. I mean, forget, fine, forget us, like, whatever, we do it. But without Joss, like, yeah. I don't know how you could disassociate that, how you could, you, you can't. They, they're synonymous, so I don't, I mean, no, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Lady with the bow. Yes. What started you in acting? Um, luck, like, random. I, I literally was stopped on the street. Um, I, would, I moved up to LA for college to go to UCLA and I was waitressing. It was like a month before school starts, something like that. And I, I got stopped on the street by a then very, he's not agenting anymore, but he was a very respectable you know, agent. He's like, you should be an actress and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, great. Yeah, okay. And it was like, <laughs> you know, like, I'm not going to sleep with you. <laughs> Um, of course, he was totally gay and completely legitimate. So, um, and and it's like, well, that sounds like fun. I mean, that's literally like I, I had loved theater and drama and anything creative like that, but it was really a hobby. It was never anything I intended to do professionally. And then I just um, I just literally landed in it. There you go. I can't believe the Klingon guy just came in and then walked out. We were like, we were on the Klingon and now we're back down. <laughs> about the ending. We talked about that, that a little the, earlier. Did end, you have like a, my like, character ending or the ending? The, the character ending. Um, well, no, I said earlier I, I asked him to kill me, so I wasn't surprised at all by that. And I just, um, the, the abruptness of it was a little weird. I didn't expect that. But um, I still stand by her, her being killed off is the right thing to do. <laughs> yes, whoever. Lady um, in red. That'll start glad to I love it. Yes, because it's brilliant. Huh? What's your favorite character and uh, what's your favorite episode? Gaius. Yeah. Oh. Gaius Baltar. Oh, 
God, he's amazing. Um, James Callis is just a genius actor. It's hard to break them down. I think they're all amazing. Um, <clears throat> but I did love his character the most. Um, and favorite episode, that is a tough one. Um, probably, I don't know the name of it, but I, I, I really did like where um, Starbuck and Apollo were boxing it out. Mm -hmm. yeah. that one. I thought that was beautifully done. And then of course the finale, which was just a piece of art, gorgeous. I love the way they tied everything together. It was beautiful. So sad it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> In the half. I haven't read any of any Buffy comics ever at all. Um, when people talk to me about what's going on, I'm like, that's great. I didn't know that that was even happening. Um, is that bad? I don't, I don't know. No, um, but I've, I've heard good things. That counts. Would that make a decent gift? <laughs> um, yeah, well. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless of whether you've read the comics or not, if your character was to be brought back, because they brought back some of your characters, how would you want that to happen if you had no choice? If she was going to come back, how would you see happening? That's my dimensional form where I, where I have powers. <laughs> but no makeup. No makeup. Well, I don't really care. I mean, it's not me. It's just someone's drawing it. It's more work for them. They have to the makeup. In this dimension, do we have more questions? Yes. Have you thought of going across the panels downstairs and going to see your start, your, the, the Star Trekkies downstairs? Seeing Nimoy and oh, <laughs> Um uh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> I won't know. Mary McDonald, you know? I know, I know. She's just so rad. I, I actually, was, I mean, my, my nerd quota was so high. I was in, um, in Philly, and the, so I'm working with this man named Christian Baranek, who, who runs Kingdom Comics, um, to division over at Disney. And he's been very helpful with my writing partner and I launching Contra Pussy. And he went with me to promote his own stuff, but also to help the launch of Contra Pussy. And it just so happens, it turns out, that he's you know, friends with Edward James Olmos. And of course, I didn't know that. He's like, oh yeah, Eddie. Oh, oh, oh. And he was there that weekend. And um, yeah, we all had breakfast, and I just about thought I was going to pass out. And not just with him, but I had it with, um, with Michael Hogan. Oh, nice. um, you know, Colonel Ty, and so Dom on Ty, you know, you know, sitting there or whatever, and I and I say Adama and Ty because they were freely flowing the fracks around. So it, was, it was very surreal, you know what I mean? I'm like, I, I don't understand what's happening. I'm in some strange universe right now that's happening. I'm like, did you just really, are you guys just seriously saying frack? Like, for real? Yeah. And I'm like, yes, why not? It's, it's been, I was like, oh my God. And so I, 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 I could maybe have had my, my fan nerd quota fulfilled just just by that. I think it's, I think it's quenched. That was pretty that was pretty amazing. It was so really good. And they couldn't be nicer by the way. They're just lovely people. Yes. Is there anything you would like to see in our movie? That you didn't get to see it? Did I what? No, I think she did everything. <laughs> I think she did. I don't really think there's anything left. <laughs> yeah, or whoever. Um, are there any other actors or actresses that you haven't worked with that you would love to? I, I mean, if I ever met Meryl Streep, I don't know that I'd actually ever be able to, to actually work because I'd be, I'd be just too blown away. And she's the epitome of of 
mm. anything I would ever hope to aspire to do creatively. I think she's just an absolute genius, the best actress that's ever lived. <laughs> I don't think she can be topped. Um, I love, uh, I love Naomi Watts. I love um, Nicole Kidman. Who else do I love? I love the girl. I don't know her name. She's on Nurse Jackie. She played. Is it have you ever seen Nurse Jackie? Yeah. No, not Eve Falco. Although she's equally rad. Um, the nurse, the sort of chubby. She's rad. I don't know who she is, but she's hysterically funny. She'd be really fun to work with. Um, do you I'm sure get, I can think of more if I. Do you get scripts that are like pure comedy? Would you like to do that? I don't. Ever, no, I don't. I mean, yes, it'd be fun. Sorry about my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's really eager to talk to me. Is what's going on? Um, I would love to do a really good comedy. Um, I mean, my kind of humor is. It's either pretty. It's either Judd Apatow, right? <laughs> so that's it's either that or it's a curb your enthusiasm. It's um, a subtle, not you know, just. Very, very subtle comedy. I would love to do that, but I don't read very much of that, actually, sadly. Okay. Uh, we have time for a few more questions. So this guy over here. Yeah. Did a scene or a piece of dialogue ever come for Anya where you just said, no, I'm not doing this, she's not doing this? Did you ever seriously butt heads? And never about dialogue, about my wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about my wardrobe, plenty. Um, but no, never about that. So she was brilliantly written. I mean, flawlessly brilliantly written. I couldn't have asked for a better job. I mean, very spoiled. Very spoiled. That whole group of writers, Marty and, and Joss and Jane, oh, everybody, Drew, who's great writers. Do you have freedom to say no? I, I never thought about it because it never occurred to me to, it just never came up. I was never unhappy with anything. You know what I mean? It was never a, never a moment where I was like, wow, really? Why am I? It's like, oh, of course, that's great, brilliant, done. You know, and happy to, to do that all the time. So, yeah, no. Uh, I just wanted to suggest that with all the extra bunnies and that that you're getting, if maybe you wanted to donate them to a local children's hospital. I have done that. I have done that, and I, I thought I thought I would mention that, but then I thought maybe I would sound even like perhaps ungrateful. But I realize that as it's coming out, like I'm giving away gifts, and that just makes me look like a total asshole. No, no, no. But I, I, I really, and it's very sweet. It really is. It's honestly very, very sweet. I don't mean to make anybody feel bad if, if they ever hear this or got, get wind of the fact that I've given away their bunnies, and I feel really bad. But it's like. The kids are so much more happy. Like they, they actually like, you know, I have. I've given them the children's hospitals, and you've no idea how it makes them like such a bright spot and a very sad time for them. So it's much better off with them. I and promise you. My question was, uh, how much leeway or interpretation did uh, Joss allow for you to bring to Anya, and uh, how? different was your interpretation of Anya from her original conception? <clears throat> um, I don't know fully how to answer that. They didn't really plan on having her be more than an episode. It was a guest star. Um, so what I, I know from what I was told that whatever I brought to that, um, Joss has said, you know, he's like, she's funny. <clears throat> we need funny. <laughs> and sort of wrote around that. And I, sorry, I'm losing my voice. <coughs> Shame. Um, wait, what was I saying? I just lost my train of thought. Uh, yeah, it was sort of, without my knowledge, a collaborative effort, because whatever I brought to her initially, they ended up kind of writing in that intonation. That sort of the whatever, those beats, whatever beats I threw, I threw in that ended up sort of being written. And you can, you know, you can hear it when you're reading a new script, like, oh, that is how I say that. And it's weird that now that that's how that's written. Um, but that's, that's as far as my credit goes. I, that's, that's all down. They're, they were geniuses, yes. Just a bit further along that line of thinking, like, 
how much input you had to your character. Like, did the None. fear the fear of bunnies and stuff like None. that? What, what, did you have I don't know where that came from. I have no idea. Um, but that's all Josh I, and Ryder. All Joss. All Joss. The only thing I did was was execute the lines in a way that felt right for me to do, and that is it. Everything else is 100 percent them. Totally. <laughs> I was just wondering if there's been any talk of you appearing on Dollhouse. No. Oh. No. There's no talk of that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Call him up, get on it. <laughs> what? Call him up, get on it. Joss, I need a job. Nope, nope, nope. No. As a bad guy. Uh, well, in the same vein, uh, we should consider ever doing like Catholic with, uh, since Jane Aspen Sanders. Oh God! I yeah. I I would. Jesus! What? <laughs> <laughs> I you gotta look. I you gotta look. No, Go ahead. Well, yeah, working with any of those writers again is awesome. And having anything to do with that show, double awesome. So if that somehow 